very dynasty. Hello, with no makeup, not really. Hello everybody, welcome back to Pixie Pixiwoo, couldn't say it. Um, today's makeup tutorial I'm going to do for you is the look that I wore for Wimbledon. So if you follow me on Instagram, Pixiewoo, um, it I did a makeup and loads of people asked for it, so I thought I would recreate it today. I only went yesterday, so it's very fresh in my mind on how to do it. Um, let me get started. Hat off. If you're wondering what is going on with my eyebrows, I just dyed them and the dye developed really quickly today. Normally it takes ages, but I must have di done different quantities. I just use a dye that I buy from Boots actually. Um, I think it's an Isla one. And I must have used different quantities and they took really, really quickly. So they're quite dark, but they needed, they needed dyeing. So if you're wondering why they're so dark, it's because the skin's a little bit stained still. So first thing, I want to pop some moisturiser on. I actually used um, an orange one of these. It's in an orange bottle. It's Dr. Dennis Gross. This one is oil-free moisturiser. So I'm going to pop that on. I like that it's quite lightweight to put makeup on. I do like the Charlotte Tilbury um, moisturiser for under makeup, but I do like this one too. I like them both. I like that this one's quite lightweight. I'm using a really, really rich new moisturiser at the moment, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, but makeup doesn't sit very well on it because it is so rich. So I put it on first thing in the morning, allow that to soak in, and I use it last thing at night before, as long as I know that I'm not going to be putting makeup on for a little while because it is extremely rich, which my skin kind of needs. I still got a red bit there on my nose. I then went in with a little bit of my um, Privage, Elizabeth Arden City Smart. They gave me a new one of these, which I'm buzzing about because. It's my favourite, um, SPF, and I tend to pop this right under my eyes, especially this time of year. You know, I use more this time of year. I use it all year round because obviously pollution and whatnot, but this time of year I want a little bit more. And even though it's got a really high SPF for 50+, plus, it doesn't seem to flash back, but I think that's because I put quite a good amount of product over the top. I've just been getting some makeup bits together because I'm... The reason I'm filming this video so in advance is because next week um, I haven't got any time to film because I'm working all week and then my best friend is getting married on Saturday um, and I'm her bridesmaid so I am with her from the Thursday just to help her sort all the last bit, I can't speak, all the last bits out and get everything together so I literally have no time next week so this one is being filmed a little bit early. I'm now getting all the bits together, all my makeup bits, um, to decide what colours um, I'm going to use on my eyes. She's a, she's a makeup artist, so she's doing her own makeup. She just wants me to do some tweaks and touch up the odd bit. Um, but she does her makeup beautifully. Right, next, I am going to take a little bit of primer. So my SPF is on. I've used my hands for everything so far. I didn't bring my Dior primer back, so I'm going in with the Estee Lauder. Um, is this called Aurora? Aura primer you can't get this one anymore but there's plenty of other primers that are brilliant actually i don't think this is too dissimilar formula to max strobe um although it's not really a primer sometimes i use brushes sometimes i use my hands today i'm using my hands for these bits you can see i've got a little bit of blue liner on my hand because that's what i was testing for color for my friend's wedding okay next Touch of foundation. I used this IT CC foundation. I totally love this foundation. I think it photographs beautifully, even though it has a high SPF. Um, I think it makes the skin look glowing, but flawless. You can really buff it into the skin. Now, this color is in tan. It's a little bit too dark for me. So what I've done is I take it all over the skin and then I go in with a slightly lighter color foundation in the areas that it's a bit dark. Really, I need to tie my hair back, don't I? I can't do makeup with my hair down. Call yourself a makeup artist. You don't even have a hairband lying around. I don't have a hairband, but I do have a bulldog clip. Do you think I can use that? Something like a hair clip, isn't it? It might rip all my hair out. I know, old school. Let's do that. Now, I used to do this back in the day. I'm gonna twist that right up, and I'm gonna get a makeup brush, put it in there. That's not a long enough bit of hair. Put it in there. Twist it round and pull it out there. Baba. God, I forgot about that little trick with a makeup brush. Okay, 
in with a little bit of, do you want to see the back so you can see what I did? Just twist it up. It's not really that clever, is it? A little bit of this foundation. I'm going to pop a bit on the back of my hand and then I'm going to take a contour brush because it's a little bit smaller and just work that through the center of the face, really buffing it in. Actually, I just put a little bit of tan on my face and that isn't a bad color for me today. I must stop talking so much. That's why my videos are always so long because I just chat utter crap. So really buff that into the skin, right into the earlobe so it all blends and I don't get a line around the neck. So I don't use too much of this foundation. I've just used like one pump. And I just make sure it's really buffed in. So you can see in the camera, it's a little bit dark. Basically, I don't want the foundation to put the color in my skin. The foundation should match my skin exactly. And then I add the color afterwards with bronzer or something like that. If you do it the other way, that's when your skin starts to look quite orange and um, too overly done like the foundation doesn't match because you've matched it more to what you want the finished result to be. Whereas actually you should put the foundation on to the exact color you are, to the color of your neck. So I've used everything that was on my hand there. Then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Tom Ford. This is the Tom Ford, in, mine is in 4.7 Cool Beige. Um, and it is the Traceless Foundation. It's a very, very beautiful foundation. And I'm gonna take that just around the neckline it's a little bit lighter than the foundation that I've got on the It Cosmetics one. So take that around that middle, that section there. I want to take that down the nose and a little bit across the cheeks and a little bit in the T-zone. Bear in mind, it might look like I've got a lot on. I'm going to really buff that in so it disappears. So the reason I really buff everything in is because I want it to be part of my skin. And that's the reason that we did brushes in the first place, because they make a massive difference. You're actually pushing the product into your skin so it lasts way longer. So that's the foundation done. That is more foundation than I normally wear, but when it's really buffed into the skin, it looks really, really beautiful and it doesn't look really heavy. Um, it will last all day, look flawless, but doesn't look heavy. And that's a really fine line to get um, so it doesn't look too much. Then I took a little bit of Rodeol concealer. This is um, actually, they need to change the packaging because I haven't had this for long and it's all, the packaging just scratches off the label so you don't know what you've got. Um, so it wears out really, really quickly. But it is called, I've got one that I haven't used as much, Diamond Concealer. Um, luminous creamy concealer with diamond powder and vitamin E. And the colour that I used was 40. I'm just going to run that on this stubborn ass blemish that I've got. A little bit on that where I've had a cold around my nose or hay fever, which is nearly gone. And a little bit here. And then I'm going to take a Real Techniques Medium Shadow Brush and just pull that down. Now you can see that I'm only keeping the concealer in that very corner. I don't need it anywhere else. Actually, I do need a tiny bit, which I'm going to take from there, just here. There's so a little bit of discoloration in my um, skin just there and here as well. So just pulling down. I don't take here where I've got the fine lines because I don't want anything there. I could pop a little bit in here as well. It's what's left on the brush. So push that over the blemish and then buff over the top so it just blends it. So making sure I push where the blemish is and lightly buff around it. Then I came to the eyes and I thought, I was wearing this dress and I thought, okay, I'm going to go for a smokyish eye, but it's summer and I don't want it to be too reflective and I need to be careful of the tones when the light's on me. Um, so I started with this, which is um, the Tom Ford um, Cream and Powder Colour Cream Eyeshadow in Naked Bronze 01. And I popped some of that on. I actually used my finger. And I just push some of that over the top of my eye. And then I stopped and thought, I feel like that's too smoky. I don't know how I feel about that. So I just buffed it so it almost disappeared into the eye. So it just added a little bit of something, but nothing. So it just adds a tiny bit of texture of colour. And the fact that it's a cream eyeshadow stops it creasing so much 
you know, just really buffed in, just disappears into the eye. But adds a really nice colour and a really nice shimmer to the eye. I only use the cream side of that. You can get lots of others. Um, other brands do them that are cheaper. Uh, really, I didn't even use that top half, so you only need the cream bit. Then I got myself a black liner. I started with a pen liner um, like this, and I just drew the outside line here because I wasn't sure where I was going with the makeup. So I just imagined that was continuing on. This is a Clinique liner. So I just imagined that line was to continue. And I thought, oh, I'll do a little bit across the eye, but I'll keep it thin. I then decided that's a little bit harsh. It's not exactly what I want. So I went over the top of it with a liquid um, liner because they're a little bit flatter, a little bit matter. This one is MAC Black Tracks. I'm trying to give you an insight into how my brain works when I'm doing makeup as well. So I took that on a fine liner brush. Um, I didn't like the shine that this gave my eyes, if that makes sense. So I just took that and pulled it along the outside again. I wanted it not quite as sharp as well. I felt like that one was too sharp and too, it was giving me too much of a, a definite flick a little touch of gel liner, and then what was left on the brush, I pulled it under the eye as well, and joined those two up. So you can see it's just that little bit softer than it was before. Using the same one, I took that inside the top waterline. So it's a black line, it's a definite black line, but it's not really sharp and really harsh. And that's what I was after. I wanted it to be a summer liner. I always do exactly the same. So I use the same liner to start off with because that's the method I took on the other eye. So I wanted them to be the same depth. I then went in with a good amount of mascara. You know the mascara I always use is YSL Volume Effect Mascara. Now if you find that in the summer your mascara transfers, I do find that, um, especially this one because it's not waterproof. Then go over the top of it with a waterproof after you put your coat on of your favourite mascara. Then you get the kind of finish of your favourite mascara and then pop a waterproof one over the top. Try and go that way, if you know what I mean, so you're getting the inside. It will stop it transferring. But it also means that when you take the mascara off, um, it comes off easier. I hate removing waterproof mascara. It pulls out your lashes, so by doing that, um, you're kind of not pulling at your lashes because the waterproof is only on the outside of the top bit. Tiny bit of shape to my brows with my Charlotte Tilbury Supermodel Pencil. Making sure they're really brushed through so it doesn't look harsh. Really don't need much of that now I've dyed them. See, I really like those eyes. I'm, I'm going to a festival tomorrow, so I might wear them for that as well. Next, I went in with a little bit of my Bronze Universal or Solid Tan Chanel Bronzer. I did buy a new one of these and I haven't had a breakout since I've bought the new one. So it could have been that my one was very, very old. It could have been just that it was time of the month that I was getting a breakout. I'm not sure. So I'm just taking that anywhere the sun hits your face. I will go over with another bronzer. So this part isn't necessarily... Um, crucial if you don't have it I just like to really layer makeup that way it looks more natural as long as it's well buffed in it lasts longer it just adds a really nice different texture to the skin sorry that brush was a duo fiber brush I'm then going to go in with a little bit of Charlotte Tilbury um, this is um, film star bronze and glow and I am using a multitask brush with the bronzer to catch the top of the skin it will kind of cling to where I put the other bronzer because the other bronzer is that little bit creamier. Setting brush and the highlighter from that palette. Just on that top of the cheekbones. Next step, harsh cream colour base. I'm so predictable. At least if you watch my videos, you go out and buy the stuff. You know you can get any look because I always use the same products. I'm just so boring and predictable. But they work. That's why I tell you about them. So harsh cream colour base. 
top of the cheekbones. Little bit of blusher on the apple of the cheeks. This is Gillian Dempsey um, and it is in the colour Petal. And that I put just on this higher point of my cheek. So a little bit just buffed into that cheek there. So it just adds a really lovely rosy glow. Doesn't pick up too much product, so you can really build with it. Then Isla Lash Pro Lashes. These are the ones that come in sets of three and sets of two. I love these for weddings, for um, summer days out. I don't like individual strips because they make my, sorry, itchy nose, they make my eyes water and these are just great. Um, but you can't, I don't think you could buy them in shops anymore. I keep buying mine from Amazon. In the UK, I'm pretty sure you can't buy them in shops at the moment. Now, I tend to take these off before I start doing the lashes, so I'm not pulling at them then. The nice thing about these lashes as well is they only come in short and medium because I do find that long individual lashes I never use and they're just a waste of effort. They're just too long. So I just take four of the three ones off of there and then I'm going to take two of the short two ones. I might have one more, I might have four, but I'll see. I've stocked up on these ready for my friend's wedding. I've got her some as well. Okay, starting with the three ones, I'm just going to dip them in the glue. Put it down and pop it on. So I'm actually going to use two of the small ones on each side because I think it's needed in between each of these long ones. So I need one here. And then get my lash separator. Now this is a genius product, if I don't say so myself. And just really get in there and separate my lashes so that the other lashes blend with it. It has to be the metal one, not plastic, because plastic won't do it. Plastic just will not cut the mustard. Now, I don't put any mascara over my false lashes purely because then they look too false and it makes them stand out where they are. They're only to add a little bit of thickness. If I mascara over them, it's going to show them all the same length and it just doesn't look as real. Okay, next on to lips, I use this lovely lipstick, which is the first time I've used one of these Charlotte Tilbury Longwear lipsticks. Um, and it is in the colour Dolly Bird. I don't know what these are actually called. Hollywood lips. I like the shape of them. They've got like a little dip so they fit the lip. I quite like a bluey tone pink for me. I do look like a dolly bird in it, don't I? A little touch of Charlotte Tilbury again setting powder just to set the any areas that might reflect a bit of light, a bit too much light. I have dry skin so I don't need to powder the whole skin, just certain areas. Now my final little tip for you is when you've done all your makeup, if you can still see your blemish a little bit, get a concealer that's the colour of your bronzer. So a concealer that's too dark for you normally and place that over the blemish so it blends in with your bronzer. And you can make it disappear and it won't look like you've put a concealer on my top tip of the day. I can also pop a little bit of my bronzer over the top of that just so it grabs it and it's just completely disappeared. Hope you like that one. Um, Charlotte Tilbury Retoucher Concealer here. That was NARS Concealer, sorry, that last one that I just used. Um, I either use this Charlotte Tilbury Retoucher or I use a um, MAC moisture cover just in that very dark bit after I've powdered it to lift it even more. I don't powder over it again. This hat is by American Apparel. And that was my little wooden makeup. I don't know if I said the dress is by Rixo. I can't remember who my necklaces are by. But you can ask me on Instagram if you if you want to know. Can't remember. I can look it up for you. Hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. If you have any other videos you want me to do when I have been a bridesmaid um, and I know what makeup I'm using, I will do my bridesmaid makeup. I've never been a bridesmaid before. I'm not a very good friend, obviously. No, um, 
I am actually a very good friend. Um, I didn't want to be bridesmaid. She said, please. I was like, oh, if you want me to. Um, I don't know why I didn't want to be a bridesmaid. I just don't want focus to be on me. Do you know what I mean? I just, I don't like to be important. I just like to sit at the back, celebrate, drink, enjoy. Got a little bit of fluff on my hat. Um, but it is my best friend, so I better, I better. Right. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Please um, follow me on Instagram, Pixie Woo, um, and my sister who's Pixie Woo with an S. Um, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a lovely day. Enjoy festival season and all that stuff. Take care. See you next time.